My friends, Michael Kingswood back at you again with story time. Sunday afternoon. Got some Prosecco. Got a story to read. So let's get to it. This one I wrote, geez, a long time ago. I was kind of in a funny mood about things. And uh, so I wrote this one. It's called Who Ate My Sock? Now let's roll. Another mismatched sock, Justine's mother muttered in irritation. Her face was set in an annoyed expression. For a few seconds, she pawed through the pile of clothes sitting next to her on the floor. Coming up empty, she blew a dangling lock of hair away from her face with a snort and tossed the single sock in her hand into the laundry basket to her side. How the hell do we keep losing socks? she asked the heir in the living room. Justine shrugged and picked up a shirt from the pile of laundry and began to fold it. Every wash, it seemed, her mother complained about the same thing. There was always a missing sock. Never mind that the socks turned up most of the time. They were in the next load, where she found them in the space between the washer and the dryer, shriveled and stiff from having dried in the chilly dampness of the basement instead of the warmth of the clothes dryer. But Mom grumbled anyway. Justine suspected it gave her a certain satisfaction, as though grumbling about this little thing helped her cope with the other mundane annoyances of life. Justine smiled to herself. If that was what kept Mommy happy, she was all for it. I keep telling you, Linda, the dryer is a trans-dimensional vortex that sucks socks away at random, said Justine's dad from behind her. He punctuated his words with a warm chuckle. Justine was certain that he winked at her mom, too. There was a long-running gag between them about this. This afternoon, though, Mom was having none of it. She glared at Dad and said between clenched teeth, Shut up, Henry! Really? She pointedly looked away from him and snatched up a pair of pants, then set about folding them in a quite violent manner. Justine blinked, confusion and a bit of apprehension growing within her. Why the tension all of a sudden? Mom was acting affronted, but it was not like Dad had done anything wrong, had he? She looked back at him over her shoulder. He was sitting at the table, reading the paper like always. Mom was not mad at him for not helping with the laundry. Justine remembered the one time he tried to help. He had actually made such a mess of folding that Mom actually banned him from laundry duty. And he had actually looked kind of stricken about that. No answers were forthcoming, so Justine went about her business helping Mom fold the clothes. They worked in silence for the next five minutes, thankfully finding no more missing socks. Then Mom stood up and hefted the laundry basket full of neatly floated items of clothing. She turned and walked toward the stairs leading up to the bedrooms, but when she reached the bottom of the stairs, she stopped and muttered what sounded like a curse under her breath. She looked back at Justine and said more loudly, Justine, dear, I forgot to move the laundry from the washer to the dryer. Would you go down and do that for me? Justine swallowed down a bit of nervous tension and nodded. Yes, Mom, she said. Mom smiled thankfully and proceeded up the stairs and out of sight. Justine pushed herself to her feet and smoothed out the summer skirt she was wearing. She shivered, but not from nerves. It was the air conditioning. Her parents said it too low. She was not afraid to go down into the basement. That was a child's fear, and she was not a little girl anymore. But once she turned around, she found she had to force herself to make each step toward the door leaning down into the basement. It seemed to take forever to reach that door, but eventually she got there and turned the doorknob. The door squeaked on its hinges, and she pulled it open, making her teeth clench and sending a chill down her spine. Don't forget to feed the beast, said Dad. Justine looked back at him and scowled. He grinned back, a cheery, sarcastic little smile that irritated her, as much as the fact that he was amused as for the knowledge that she should be as well. Justine tried to smile back at him. Then she turned, squared her shoulders, flipped on the light, and set off downstairs. The steps down to the basement were plain slats of wood nailed to a simple support structure. There was no handrail. The single bulb set into the basement ceiling in a fixture that was missing its cover cast a dim glow that left the corners of the unfinished room in mysterious shadows. The air was filled with the odor of moisture and mildew beneath the scent of flowers from a plug-in air freshener that Mom had installed down there. Justine reached the bottom of the stairs and stopped for a moment. Part of her screamed that she should just run back upstairs now and let Mom deal with the stupid laundry. She stopped on that part of herself. She was beyond such silliness. Freshly determined, she turned to the left and walked toward the washer and dryer. The two appliances sat against the far wall next to each other. 
A small table was set up to the right of the washer where Mom would normally set the laundry basket. The detergent and dryer sheets sat on a shelf above the table. All was as it always had been, but that was small comfort. Justine had always found the setup to be strangely disturbing, though she could never quite put her finger on why. It was probably just because it was in the basement and the basement was creepy. However she might tell herself there was no reason to be scared, Justine still felt fear inching its way into her psyche as she approached the washer and dryer. The loading doors, set in the sides of the machines like clothed mouths, seemed to grin at her with malicious glee. Justine found herself throwing open the two doors with a force she did not intend. The washer's door opened more widely than normal and hit the dryers with a metallic clang, stopping the dryer door from opening more than halfway. Justine blinked, then laughed in the back of her hand. She truly was getting silly. She shook her head, chatting herself with the childishness for the tenth time in the last two minutes, and then she set about moving the wet laundry from the washer into the dryer. It took less than a minute, all told. She shut the washer door and reached up to retrieve a dryer sheet from the shelf. As she pulled the sheet from its box, she looked down and saw two socks lying on the ground not far from the dryer. Frowning, she bent down and examined them. They were a matched pair of Argyle socks, the kind Dad liked to wear with his business suits. They were dry, the kind of dry that comes from the dryer, not from sitting out in the basement for a week, so she picked them up and shoved them into her pocket. Then she tossed the dryer sheet into the dryer, closed the door, and pushed the start button. The dryer began its cycle and Justine turned away. Then she heard it, a low, drawling voice speaking from behind her. Justine. Justine froze. Fear, no panic, flooding into her. She screamed at herself to run to get upstairs, but she could not move. Justine, feed me. Then a scraping sound came from behind her and she sensed something moving. Justine yelped and tried to run then, but her feet tangled up as she fell to the ground. Something cold touched the bottom of her foot, and she wailed, pushing herself away. Tears streamed down her cheeks, and she breathed in shallow gasps. What was it? She looked behind her and froze in impotent terror. The dryer had moved away from the wall behind her and was moving toward her. It should have been straining against its power cord, the cord stretched as though it was made of bungee. The machine itself had changed. It was no longer just a rectangular hunk of metal with a loading door into its front and controls on top. The two knobs on the control panel were sunken, darkened in their centers like the pupils of a pair of eyes. The loading door split in half horizontally and was partly open, revealing two rows of teeth. From the sides of the machine, two metallic protrusions, almost like arms, extended toward her, groping the air as though reaching for something. Justine opened her mouth to scream, and nothing came out. This had to be a dream. Justine, you know what I need. Feed me. The dryer monster came closer. Its mouth opened wider, and she could see the gearing mechanism within the machine churning around beneath, behind the teeth, almost like a hungry man licking its tongue over his lips. A tiny squeak escaped Justine's lips, and she pushed herself away as hard as she could. She managed to go three feet before she ran into something hard and narrow the edge of the bottommost stair. She scrambled around, clawing up the stairs until she managed to grant a handhold, then hauled herself to her feet and pushed herself upward toward the door in safety. Something round metallic shot across the space in front of her, embedding itself into the wall with a solid thunk. Justine's eyes widened and she realized what it was, the dryer monster's arm. Fairly gibbering with horror, she tried turned to find the dryer at the bottom of the stairs, its mouth gaping wide, and its other arm plunged into the wall behind her, preventing her from moving in any direction. No, she begged weakly, her voice breaking as she backed into the wall and slumped down onto the stairs. No, please. It was barely a whisper. I'm hungry. Feed me. Justine sobbed again, tears flowing freely, and she hugged her knees close to her chest. She expected to feel the dryer monster's teeth sinking into her at any moment, but then she felt a bulge in the side of her pants. What was that? She moved her hand to her pocket and felt a flash of hope. The socks! What did Dad said about the socks? Justine dug the socks out of her pocket and held them up in front of herself. The dryer eyes narrowed and seemed to focus in on them. Yes. Feed me. The mouth opened wider than she imagined possible. 
Justine pressed herself back against the wall, trying to make herself flat so she could get away from the thing. Then she threw the two argyle socks into the dryer monster's mouth. A deep sigh of contentment issued from the machine, and its mouth closed. A low churning, different from its normal drying cycle, began to sound within it, and the lines of its mouth turned upward into a small smile. Then it retracted its arms from the wall on either side of Justine and retreated across the room to the basement, to its place next to the washer. Justine gasped in relief and slowly pushed herself to her feet. She wiped her eyes and her nose and stumbled her way up the stairs. She had just reached the door and was beginning to turn the doorknob when she heard the voice again. Justine. She turned around slowly and was struck in the face by something flying through the air at her. She batted at whatever it was and grabbed it. Her eyes widened when she saw what it was. A single argyle sock. Thank you. Justine shrieked and th threw the door open. She burst into the living room and slammed the door shut that sagged against it and slid to the floor. She wept. Sobs of terror mixed with relief as adrenaline flowed through her body, making her skin tingle. She sat there for maybe a minute before the crackling of folding paper from behind her caught her attention. Justine turned her head to see Dad, still sitting at the table, looking over the fold of his newspaper with narrowed eyes and a small, knowing smile on his face. I told you so, he said. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's a kind of a goofy, fun story. Um, don't remember where I got the idea from. The whole, the, the washer and dryer is a transdimensional vortex that sucks up, uh, clothing. It's a meme I heard somewhere, but, you know, some of a gun, it, it's got to be true, because how many times do you do the wash, and then, holy cow, we're missing, you know, a sock, or we're missing something, and where the hell they go, and you never find it again. It's happened a number of times to me. And, and then, of course, it's an ongoing joke around our place here where the missus would go and there's eh, something's missing hey it's that transdimensional vortex and then she gets all mad but eh, you know she didn't think it's funny like i do so anyway that's it for uh this week uh it's been a uh you know fun short story uh hopefully you liked it if you do yeah go buy uh go buy a copy because you liked it hey you know when i got my uh my publishing website my publishing business site SSNStorytelling.com, which I set up a couple of years ago, but didn't do much with it. And then I wanted to set up an e-store, e but it was a pain in the butt to deliver stuff. Well, I finally got all that stuff figured out. It's a great service called BookFunnel that helps me deliver ebooks uh, right to your devices without having to go to Amazon or anything, which is great. And I can accept cryptocurrency there. I can accept PayPal, you know, you name it. And all the money goes to me. None of it goes to... Amazon or Nook or any of that other stuff. So it's much better to go there if you want to buy my stuff than to go somewhere else. But if you have to go to the other stores, you can do that. Or if you don't want to buy the store because you already heard it and you want to buy it, you still want to send me a tip, hey, send something to a crypto wallet, or hey, go buy a Patreon to become a patron. Or just, you know, yeah, whatever you want to do. Or just come back next week for the next story because you just like it. And that's fine. You know, spread the word about uh, the podcast and the video channel. Spread the word about my stuff. If you like it, tell your buddies. Uh, that's it. Um, hope everybody has a great week. Talk to you next time.